So on Canvas, we've got a brand new module, uh, module week two, if you go there, we've got here, as usual, it'll be some sort of welcome message, goals of what you need to do that week. Toolkit will often be links, maybe some videos or other things to do, and then the actual assignment, and then the what you should have done wrap up sort of thing. So again, you should always check out, these are, also, these are always gonna vary every week to tell you what's going on. Um, goals, again, a little bit more concrete. Well, we're going to learn some JavaScript, what are variables, etc. Items you need to do. Watch the online lecture, then we'll do the in-person lecture, and then you'll work on your JavaScript assignment. Now, I did put it in here, and I sent out an email uh, saying that you needed to go watch a video before today, because the class is in-person and online. So we can't do everything in person. You'll have to do some things on, out on your own. And if you didn't get a chance to do it, you do want to go through that uh, as soon as you can because we're going to start at a point that I assumed that people did this video first. It was about 20 minutes long and it was about creating a mobile-friendly web project. It was about creating a website that looks really nice on mobile devices. And again, it wasn't a very, very long video. Um, but it did set up a, a basic interface project. If you didn't get a chance to do it, don't worry. I've got a, a starting point for us that we will start with because I'm going to focus on the JavaScript. This lecture was to create an HTML uh, interface, but I want to focus today on JavaScript, so I'll already give you a starting point. So that's there. The assignment will be... As a preview, uh, basically you'll set yourself up in a project folder, you'll need this index.html file and so forth, um, but we're going to uh, take it from a starting point that I will give you so that you're not too far off. What you will need to do, this printer's a little noisy, let me... Uh, what we will need to do together then is we're going to create a form uh, with input fields, submit and cancel, and then it'll do stuff. So JavaScript is about doing something, uh, interacting. The user is going to type something into your web page, and then the JavaScript will take over and do something with that input. This is not going to be incredibly complex, but it will be different than what you've seen before. If you've only got experience in HTML or CSS, this is uh, another language. It's another syntax. It's another set of commands. And again, you're not going to be a pro in today's you know, three-hour long lecture. You're going to need to take the other classes. For example, CIS 165. That's the one that focuses on JavaScript. There's going to be a little bit of extra credit. I'll come back to that. And it's going to be due on Monday, so you have approximately a week uh, by midnight. And these are the things you're going to get graded on, 10 points. So um, then the wrap-up, it says, well, this is what you should have done at the, at the end of the week. And there it is there. So um, general questions on this before we get into details? OK, so the... Um, Here's a preview of what we're about to do. The, um, let's see, where did I put it? So the, okay, the end result is going to be something like this. Um, okay, we'll do it like this. We can actually use these various web browsers to make it behave like a mobile device, and I'll show you how to do that, but I can make it so that we, we pretend that we're using a Galaxy phone, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But you're going to have some sort of um, you know, web project. Imagine that this is on a real like mobile device. It's a nice, small, you know, compact thing. We're going to press a button. It's going to come to this home screen right here. Do you see that little bit of animation that happened? All of that came from the lecture from, from Tuesday, so you want to go back to that video to see how to do that. We're going to have then some sort of um, you know, project about saving stuff. This is going to be a uh, comic book uh, saving app, let's say. So let's say I'm going to save a comic book here. Batman, number one. 1940, so I'll save that. And then when I view my collection, there it is right there. I've got one item in my collection, so I'll save another one. 
uh, Wonder Woman number one, 1941, I think. Save that, and then I view, and then I've got another item. Well, that's happening through JavaScript. That's interactivity. I'm putting in data, JavaScript takes over and does something with it, which is right now to simply display it on screen. If I refresh my browser, it's all gone. I'm not really saving it in any permanent storage. I'm not saving it in a database or anything complex like that. But as a starting point to see what JavaScript can do and what it looks like, we're going to have this assignment. So I'm going to give you the starting point of this interface. I'm going to give you the starting point, which was the, the Monday lecture about how do you create this thing and these buttons and this nav bar and pop-ups. That was yesterday. Today we're going to focus on typing stuff in here and doing something with it. That's the JavaScript. Does that make sense? Any general questions at the moment? To do this, I'm going to give you then a copy of the starting point file. In your web design folder on the desktop, you need to get a copy of what I have put in there for you. So let's do this. Go to your desktop and uh, you should see a folder of uh, web design share double click web design folder open up the cis 256 folder and then copy assignment to start don't just open it up here you need to copy it to your desktop or your flash drive the thing about the um this uh, this web design stuff that if you make changes to it it's going to affect other people you don't want that you want a copy of the work yourself so copy it to your flash drive if you didn't bring a flash drive put it to your desktop so I'm gonna copy it and put it on my desktop if you did this right you should have a copy of that start folder on your desktop. If you don't have that, check with me because you need to have a copy of it. Don't work on it from the folder, from the share folder. Get it off of your desktop. Everyone have that? Where is Happy it? Okay, well, we're going to get back to our coding software that we used last week to write some code. That was a whole week ago. Does anyone remember? What was that software we used last week to write code? Brackets. Brackets. Okay, go to your start menu and find the Brackets app. So start menu, find Brackets. Um, how many of you downloaded Brackets at home and used it? Okay, good. Did anyone use any other software? Uh, okay, well, what, what did you use besides Brackets? Adam. Adam, okay, that's a cool one. What about yourself? Sublime. Sublime. Okay, there's a bunch of coding software out there. Notepad++, Brackets, Microsoft Visual Code, Sublime, Text Wrangler, Adam. There's lots of ways to write code. Notepad, regular old Notepad, Text Edit. But these code editing software are way better because their purpose is to write code. Um, and it also does a bunch of other things. So if you get a pop-up about update, just cancel that. Don't worry about updating it. These computers, if you ever make any changes, they just reset back to factory settings when you turn them off. So it's a waste of time to do any of these updates. Now, the purpose for that is what if you get a virus on the computer? No problem. Restart the computer, and it goes back to factory settings. But with your own work, obviously, if you leave it on the desktop, it won't be here next time. That's why I say make sure you save it on a flash drive. Cancel that, and whatever might be open, let's just do file menu close all. Brackets usually starts up with a little preview thing. Just go to the file menu close all. And then file menu open folder. Zoom in on that. So let's go to File Open Folder. We need to open the folder that we just copied to the desktop so that we can work on our project. 
file open folder and go find in this window here on your desktop or on your flash drive where you saved your assignment to start open that and then select the folder so now it should say on the left side that we're in the assignment to folder and we've got this index HTML file starting point. Now, when you use any of this code editing software, you write the code, you save the code, you run the code. And in brackets, running the code is clicking that little uh, live, pre live preview button. In other software, it might be a different way. You might do up on the run menu, run code. On other software, it might say, you know, deploy. Whatever software you're using, there's going to be a way for you to see your code. Or also, the if all else fails, you simply can open your folder where your project is at and just double click it. You know, outside of the software, it's just an HTML file, something.html. And if your software is, sometimes I see that the, that the connection between the editor and the browser is broken sometimes. So all you have to do is just double click your, um, your HTML file in the folder and it should run in the browser. And then you've got, you know, something to work with. In any event, um, if you just take a quick look at the, you know, the live preview over here. What should happen is that it opens it up in Google Chrome is the default in, um, in brackets. Well, Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, all of that works to view and edit your, uh, to view and interact with your code, of course. But I'm looking at my code on a regular computer, a desktop computer or a laptop. But if I want to sort of preview it like on a mobile device, a lot of people are visiting websites on mobile. I know I've always got this with me. I can easily check websites. I can have, I can activate a special mode in most web browsers to activate mobile friendly view. So I can load up my project so that it pretends to be a mobile device. It's going to depend on the browser, but in Google Chrome at least, when you've got Chrome running up like this on the keyboard, you can press F12. So you've got your rows at the top, F1, 2, 3, 4, F12. So try this on the keyboard, press F12 on the keyboard. You should see this side panel that appears. It gives you a preview of the code plus other stuff. But then you've got on the top over here, on this row of icons, you have elements, console, etc. And next to it, you have this toggle device toolbar. You have a little cell phone or a little tablet. And if you click that button, on the left side now, your interface gets tall and thin, like a mobile device. And better yet, at the top here, you can specify what kind of device to pretend to be. You go to responsive and say, OK, activate it like I'm on an iPhone uh, 6 or an iPad or a Galaxy. And so I'm, I'm just going to go to the first one, Galaxy. They're all the same, but Galaxy. And now this is sort of like pretending to be uh, a, an Android Galaxy phone. The screen has changed to kind of pretend to be a little bit more, more mobile friendly. And uh, what you could do here, you know, for fun is when you're in this mode, you can actually visit real websites you're still in your web browser you can visit websites and then it will pretend to be on an Android or an iPhone and you'll get you know these mobile versions it says open it in your IMDB app well I don't have that I'm on I'm not on a real Android phone to open my real app but it's pretending that I am so this developer mode here F12 is very powerful you have all of this other all of these other panels to do advanced web design stuff. You have this toggle toolbar, toggle device feature to pretend to be on mobile. You have these various devices. I'm on an iPhone. I'm on an iPad. Sure. You can even click up here to rotate it. I'm landscape mode. 
so these web browsers are not just about um, browsing a website uh, from your computer, it's to pretend to be on a device when we are doing advanced things. So um, I'm going to close this just so that we get the practice of turning it on again in a moment. But I'm going to close it completely to get back to our code. In the lecture video that I had you view previously, I talked about creating all of this. This is 89 lines or so of code that creates that interface. This sort of like first um, welcome screen. Eventually, you're going to have to fill in your own logo here. You don't have to do this about comics. You could do it about some other thing. This app, this project is going to be storing something. So you can choose whatever you want. Uh, my music collection or something. So um, we will see back on the assignment that you're going to need to change some of these things. If you want to, you can keep it with comics or change it. You're going to need to change that text, add a logo. You're going to have this button and then this sort of interface and so forth. So all of that came from the video that I asked you to look at. So if I don't go into detail, what does this do? What does that do? That was the video. But if you scroll down to line um, 40, we have, I'm going to zoom in here, control plus if you want to zoom into your code. On line 40, we have a block called article, role, main, class, UI content. This is going to be the main part that you see. Uh, you can have a top area and a bottom area, but then the central main area is in article. Do you see above article we have header? So header is going to be stuff at the very top, the nav bar, buttons to click on at the head, at the top. The main content in the middle is article. If at the top you've got header, what do you think you might have at the bottom of the screen? footer and I see it right there line 43 so stuff that I want to appear at the top of my app will be in the header stuff that I want in the middle article stuff at the bottom footer that's the whole point of the lecture from yesterday using something called jQuery mobile to create a mobile interface very quickly something top middle bottom with columns and side panels and pop-ups and animation that's jQuery mobile we want to create a, um, just like the example, I want to create a, a way for people to type in the name of the comic, the number of the comic, the year of the comic, and save it. That's going to be a form. So we have to write some code here. After add a comic, let's add a new line 42. We can write an HTML comment here. We'll say input form to capture user input. Just a quick note here that explains to ourselves what does the following code do. It's a form for people to type into it, click save, and something happens. In the actual code, the actual HTML code is the form tag. The great thing about HTML is that basically there's the right tag for the right task. If you need to put an image, there's a tag for that. There's code for that. If you need to put a, 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 a sign-up form, there's a tag for that, etc. I'm going to break that apart into two lines. Press Enter to break it apart. We're going to ask for the name of the comic, the number of the comic, and the year of the comic. When you do your own version, again, you can keep it as comics or make it other things. The name of the album, the band of the album, the year, the year of the album, whatever. So you'll have to do at least three things that a person will save. This 
is the text that is going to appear on screen, but then we need the tag of input where they will actually input what you're asking for. So each one of these will have an input. Input tag is a special case that does not have a pair. We had the P tag for paragraph. We say the paragraph starts here, there's text in the middle, and then the paragraph ends here, starting and ending tags. We had the article, article tag. We're saying the main content starts here, article, then there's content, then it ends here, starting and ending. Almost all tags have a pair. Input doesn't. Save it and run it. Save it and go to your live preview just to see what it looks like so far. It's not quite complete yet, but we'll be able to start to see some stuff. So if you save it and click the live preview, you'll get your, get this out of the way, you'll get your, um, you'll get your home, you press home, when you're in home, then you'll see name, number, year. Did everyone get that? Anyone? Yes, the code that we wrote, we wrote it in the section of home, so it's on the home screen. Okay, well, um, that's cool. I'll be able to type stuff in here, type stuff, type stuff, and then save it. Whoops, there's no save button. Or there's no cancel button to start over. So after, after name, number, year, we have another input. But this needs to do something else. It's not just going to be type something into it. Input fields, input tags, fully work when they have attributes, when they have extra information. So we need to add an attribute of type. An attribute um, goes inside of the angle brackets. Be careful here, make sure it's inside, not outside. Input space type, and all of this is in the angle brackets. This is an attribute. We use attributes a lot to add extra data or extra detail to a tag. Type submit. The type of input field that we've got here is not just a box to type something into. It's going to be a button to submit. And then another attribute, value, save. Whatever word you want your button to say is this value. So I'm capitalizing it because I want it to be capital. You can make it say go. You can make it say submit. <clears throat> you can make it say anything you want. The value is the text that will appear on screen. You can save it and run it. Now I have a save button. Next line, another input. Now usually if I fill out a form, I click Submit. But sometimes if I make a mistake, I want to start over. So we have an input, for, an input field of type um, Cancel. Is it Cancel or Clear? I think it's Cancel. Uh, I should just check my notes, yes. Oh, it's reset. Yeah. Not cancel, reset. And the value of whatever you want it to say. I'll make the button say clear or cancel or reset or start over or whatever you want.
clear and save. The point of that is if I type something into these boxes and I click clear, they reset. If I click save, um, it doesn't actually work. It sort of like kicks you out of the app and takes you back home. So that's normal for the moment. If you try to save, we have not programmed that yet. If you try to save, it'll kick you back out to the first screen. So that's normal. But this is what we've got so far. This form has three fields and obviously it can have a bunch of fields. I want to also capture the, the writer of the comic or the company of the comic. So I would make a new item, company input. Now the thing about this particular, these particular inputs, we added a type so that it knew what to do. These inputs don't quite know what to do, even though they look right. So we actually need to complete them a little bit more. Let's go back to input, the first one of name, input type, text. I expect text to be written in this box. With number and year, I expect numbers to be written in those boxes. So these have a type of number. These will look the same basically when, when you save it and run it, but now it's more correct because a, a lot of uh, 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 the big concept about coding is you there's, a, there's defaults oftentimes, but you shouldn't rely on the defaults. The default might not do what you need it to do. So I never said what type of data to put into these boxes, and it seemed to work. But to be more correct, I want to tell it explicitly. When this project runs in the browser or on a device, I expect that there will be text in this box, and I expect that there will be numbers in this box. So especially when you're on a real mobile device, the cool thing is that have you ever been to a website and you're going to type something in and it only lets you type in stuff with the number pad, not with, not with the alphabet, not with the keyboard? Well, that's because he got programmed to say the only thing we can type in there is numbers. We also have other ones like email. You have a slightly different keyboard sometimes on mobile devices when it expects a, an email address. Maybe the at symbol is very easy to get to. So we can do input type email and your keyboard on your device will activate to only uh, allow you know basic email input and so what I would see here differently is not too much except I see number and I see here that it looks like I can press you know numbers up and down that wasn't there a moment ago and especially when I'm on a real mobile device I can um, I'll get a pop-up keyboard that focuses on numbers Eventually the idea is that I'm going to press save, JavaScript will jump in, it will then read what's in those boxes and do something with them. In order for the JavaScript to know to do that, these inputs need to have a unique name so that the JavaScript can read what's in those boxes. So these inputs now need unique identifiers of IDs. So one more attribute, ID equals quotes input name, ID equals input number, and ID equals input year. Each one of these three now has a unique identifier. When we, run, when we write some JavaScript, the, we'll write some JavaScript that, that will say, go look for an input field named input number and grab what's in there so that we can do something with it. So each of those three fields now has one more has one more um, attribute. So make sure you're doing all of this inside of the angle brackets of the input field. If you do it outside it won't work. We've got an input tag attribute of type to say that this accepts numbers and a unique ID for the JavaScript input year. And this has got input number, input name. Again, if I save it and run it, it doesn't look any different to people. But behind the scenes, it's set up in a very important way 
so that the JavaScript can kick in and do what it needs to do. We actually need, need one more unique identifier for the whole form. If you back up to line 43, we also need to give that form an ID attribute so that the JavaScript knows which form are we talking about. Even though we've only got one, imagine we've got a project where we save several different things on several different screens. Each one of them is going to be a form tag. And therefore, each one needs a, a, an individualized ID tag. So we'll add the ID also, I mean the ID attribute. Um, so we'll call this one, I usually call them something like FM as short for form, save comic. So now this form has a unique identifier that the JavaScript can differentiate this one between the other ones. FM short for form, save comic. Now again, you're not going to be a pro in JavaScript at the end of today because I'm skipping a lot. Like why is it uppercase, lowercase, all of that stuff? We, we don't quite have time for all of that in one day of, of lecture. Um, we haven't really written any JavaScript yet. This is still HTML. Um, but we will see that we will get the basic ideas of JavaScript. And the point in general about it in this class is we're going to focus a lot on WordPress, of course, starting next week. But WordPress ultimately behind the scenes is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and other languages. So if we know some of those languages, at least the basic syntax, we can pull back the curtain of WordPress and make edits to our code that perhaps are not easy to do via the regular WordPress interface. So this is why we're getting a little intro to the basic languages. So just to confirm what this looks like at the moment, save it and run it one more time. And I go to the home screen. And again, it doesn't look like I have um, any, um, any big difference visually from a moment ago. But I have some input field for name, some input field for number, for year, save, and clear. If I want to change the size or the fonts or whatever, uh, we don't quite have time for that. And it's not going to be required for the, for the assignment. But this is going to be required. If you get this part working, this is one of the important things you'll be graded on, that you have a form set up. Let's do a little pause right here. Do you get what I get? Do you get a form with three fields, save and clear? Anyone having any trouble? That's the code so far. From here to here. Everyone, everyone good? Okay, JavaScript is a language that will allow you to do calculations, uh, to read input fields, to save data, to display it on screen, to interface with a database. It's a very powerful language. It's very complex also. I forgot to bring the book. Um, actually, I, I think I left it in my office. Uh, but uh, I've got a book on HTML and CSS that I recommend. It's 500 pages long. Then I've got a book for JavaScript that I recommend. It's 600 pages long. So those two other languages in one book versus JavaScript in its own book, 600 pages. Again, you don't need to have all of the JavaScript codes memorized. You just need to know the ones that you need to know for your project. Or you need to know how to look them up or find a good book or a good website. What was that website I mentioned last week that is very useful for learning HTML? W3Schools. W3Schools.com. It also has tutorials on JavaScript and PHP and a lot of these other languages. So I really recommend that site. In order for this form to do anything, let's write some JavaScript. This form right now is just cosmetic. It doesn't do anything. I want to click Save, and I want it to do something. That's JavaScript. Let's scroll down near the end of our code. We've got some lines over here, line 91 to 95. Um, again, the video explains what those lines are about, but I also put some notes. Let's make a new line before line 96. 
make a brand new line before slash body, before the end of our HTML slash body. Let's add a new, a new comment here. We'll say inline JavaScript, not, not inline, sorry, uh, embedded JavaScript, embedded JavaScript for our form. What follows is JavaScript embedded into this file that makes our form work. And as you get more educated in these basic languages, you will learn that there is inline, embedded, and external JavaScript. Don't worry about that just yet. It's just there's JavaScript. Um, same thing with HTML. I, I mean, uh, same thing with CSS. There's inline, embedded, external CSS. Just don't worry about the differences just yet, but we're going to write our JavaScript in this file. We have a tag called script. So a script tag for JavaScript. So anything in between these two tags now is the world of JavaScript. And now in between these two tags, we use the we use this style of comments in the world of JavaScript. Hey, that looks familiar. That was CSS. Yeah, when we wrote a little bit of CSS, we had those that type of comment slash asterisk asterisk slash. Now I teach a lot of classes, and I forget. Did we cover a little CSS last time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm not um, going out of my mind. Okay. So we did. We did do a little bit of CSS. Uh, so um, slash asterisk asterisk slash is a comment. So anything in between there, of course, will not be, you know, real code. But we have to switch over to this type of comment when we're in JavaScript. Let's write our first little bit of JavaScript here. Console. Now what I love about many of these code editors is that they pop up to give you help, and they might also pop up to give you like a little bit of info. This one is saying, the console object provides access to the browser's debugging console. The specifics of how it works, blah, blah, blah. You can click to read more. It'll open up the web browser and give you a huge article about everything you wanted to know about this one command, which is pretty complex. Continuing dot log. This pops up, outputs a message to the web console. Tell me more. You can click that if you want. Open close parentheses, semicolon. This is JavaScript. It's not like HTML that it has the angle brackets. It doesn't have an opening and closing tag. JavaScript deals with objects and methods. So another kind of comment is just like this. I usually write this one more often, double slash, space. This is a single line comment. I'm usually going to write comments this way, because it's just faster. Double slash, comment, JavaScript deals with objects and methods. Objects are the things you work with. Methods are how you work with them. So when you do the when you do the single line comment, every line needs a starting point double slash, no space between the slashes. It's slash slash, then a space, your comment. Or single slash asterisk, write your comment, multiple lines, end it with a asterisk slash. I just for me it's so much faster. My hands already on the keyboard there and I just type double slash and then I write the comment. But the idea is here that JavaScript behaves in a totally different way. It deals with objects, methods, other things such as properties and other things. 
but objects are the things that we work with, and the methods are how we work with them. Console is a certain place in your web browser, is a certain thing in your web browser. And then dot log is the method. What are we doing with that thing? In the parentheses, quotes, we'll, we'll say, hello world. Again, the classic message that everyone always does when you first learn something, I want to write hello world in JavaScript. In the console object, using the log method, um, with the value of hello world. This will be like a very quick test to confirm, am I at least starting at the most basic? Did I properly write the script tag? Did I properly, did I properly write the script HTML tag? Did I properly write the JavaScript at the moment? Save it and run it. And let's see our message, hello world. Well, this is a trick question. I don't see it on the screen. Anywhere that you go inside of the app, you're not going to see Hello World anywhere. Well, that's because I've said, in the console object, display the message Hello World. The console object is F12. The console object is this, is this place where the... Um, where the, the web developer, where we see special output. Um, press F12 and then switch to the console viewer, the console object, and I see right there, hello world. That's where our JavaScript is saying to do something. Not in the main, not in the main document. We have document object. I could say document.write hello world, and it would write it in the main document. That's not what I want. I want to write it in the console. The console is like the secret place for us developers to test our code, to get feedback for our code, to troubleshoot it, and so forth. So if you see the hello world, it works. If you see a scary failed message, don't worry about it. That's just saying our fav icon is missing, which again, don't worry about it. But I have the message, hello world. It's a, it says here that on my line 103, I've got my message right there, hello world. So if you get a message about a uh, fav icon missing, don't worry about it. If you get any other error, if it didn't say your message, hello world, let's pause right now. If it doesn't do that, we got to fix that before going on. Anyone having any trouble? Did everyone get your hello message? So we have hello world displayed because we are saying in the console where, what, where, what thing are we working with? The console screen. What method? The log method, the log command. Methods are how you work with them. You can also say aka commands. So what is log? Is that just type basically? What is that mean? It's a command that lets you write a message. Yep. Okay. Any sort of text, we can write text, numbers, whatever we want here. So the, that method's purpose is to write a message. Where do we write it? We write it in the console. So console.log. Let's try another one over here. Document.write. Actually, uh, as we're writing it here, document. Each web page loaded in the web browser has its own document object. This object serves as an entry point, blah, blah, blah. So okay, in the main document, dot write. Writes a string of text to a document stream opened by document.open. OK, it tells you a lot. And it is very complex. But here, basically, I'm about to say, let's write something actually in the main document, in the main window. Open close parentheses, semicolon. All the JavaScript commands have some sort of objects and methods, and then at the end of the line, semicolon, the end, end of statement. That's my command. So the basic syntax is 
some object, some method, some property, some stuff. And then at the end, end of statement, at the end of each line. So now I'm saying document write. Let's write something into the main document. And in the something, quotes, write whatever you want here, but perhaps not literally. So in theory, what I'm saying is, in the main document object where, the main window, I'm going to use the method, the command, write, and its purpose is to write something on screen, but where, in the document, and the thing we're writing is that message, whatever you want to write. I'm writing that, you can write whatever you want to write. Save it and run it, and see if you can find where that wrote it in your project. If you have a keen eye, do you see as you go from screen to screen, I see it on the top left for a moment? It's behind everything. So I didn't, we, since we've got a slightly more complex project than a basic web page, it doesn't quite know where to put it, so it's behind everything. We can, of course, specifically target it, make it appear in the nav bar. We won't quite get there yet, but I'm just showing you here. We can write something in the console object, something in the document object. Let's do one more. Window, the window object represents a window containing a DOM object. Now we're dealing with the whole web browser window, Document uh, window.alert displays an alert dialog with the specified content and an OK button, parenthesis, semicolon. Now, do you see the syntax of it? The way you write this is very consistent. Some sort of object, dot, some sort of method, and oftentimes some sort of specific content. So, hello, everyone. Now save it and run it and see what happens with that JavaScript command. In the window object, I'm using the alert method to do something. You'll see what it is as soon as you run it. But it makes a dialog box with your message. So if you save it and run it right away, pop up. Hello, everyone. Now, mine also looks weird behind the scenes that my, my web page doesn't look fully formed, but as soon as I click OK, it continues. Your, your browser may show your, your whole web page behind the scenes first, and then the pop-up, or it may sort of seem stuck, and then the pop-up. Again, don't worry about that stuff. That's more complex stuff to deal with later. Uh, but here is an example of writing some JavaScript so that your content appears in three different places. In the developer's console, only you can see it when you press F12. Document write will appear somewhere in your actual web project. And then the window alert appears on top of the, on top of the window. So you can write comments like this too. Appears in the F12 dev console. Or appears in the main um, document. or appears as a pop-up over the window. So these JavaScript comments, you can also do them this way. You've written some real JavaScript, and then after that, start a comment here, and it continues to the end of the line. The next line, it's regular JavaScript again. So in JavaScript, you have two ways to write comments. They're both valid. Okay, this pop-up is going to get annoying. Let's comment it out. We don't need the pop-up to happen every single time. We just prove that it works. We don't need to actually do it. You can delete it or comment it out. 
So yeah, I have a double comment here, that's fine. Um, but I, I want to turn off that pop-up. I don't need to see that pop-up every time. Next line. Create variables to store the form and output div. Okay, so variables basically are containers, just like this container right here is holding perhaps uh, lemonade or something tasty, and those over there holding other things. That looks tasty over there too. So all of those containers are holding something, but you can dump out what's in it and put something else into it. This is a variable. It varies to see what's, what's inside of it. In computer terms, that's a variable. It's a container. It can currently hold something like a person's name, or it can hold a person's age, or it can hold really complex things like a whole uh, you know, data set of a person, their name, their age, their, their height, their weight, etc. So variables store things. We need to create a variable that will store the form that we created plus something else here that we didn't create. But what that is, is in, the, in this screen here, we need to create a variable that stores this, this form. Eventually, when this fully works, when, when we click Save, we will then be able to see the results in this table. So we need to create a, a variable for this table. When we did document write, it didn't know where to write that message, so it just put it behind things. I want my comics to be written specifically in that table. So if I identify exactly where I want things to happen, if I make variables, if I make objects out of these things, I can target them more specifically. So we will say create variables, aka objects, to store the form. JavaScript has a bunch of built-in objects console, document, window, etc. But we can make our own, and we often have to. I created a form, but JavaScript doesn't see it, because it doesn't see it as, a, as, a, as an object. So we will create a variable representing it. We will output to that table, but JavaScript doesn't know to output there yet, because it doesn't see it as an object. We will create a variable for it. So next line, var, this creates a variable and it pops up here, it doesn't really explain it I guess, but var is the way that you create variables, that you create objects, and we will create a variable called $lfmsavecomic. We're about to create an object. There is an object called console. Well, we're creating our own. We can name it whatever we want. We're going to name it this way, the dollar symbol specifying that we invented it. For example, we can call it whatever we want. We already have a we have something up on the top over here called um, called form ID fm save comic well there is an element um, based on fm save comic equal to dollar return a collection of matched elements either found in the dom or based etc so parentheses semicolon We are creating it, our own object, calling it whatever we want. It is equal to, it is made from something, and this right here is going to be our, our jQuery selector. It's going to go find something. What it's going to find is quotes, pound, fm, save comic. The form above Actually, let me do something here. We can, can I split my screen here? Split the vertically. Um, 
just to show it to you this way. I'm going to show you two things at once. Both of these are the are the same HTML file, but just to show you this easily here. Uh, I'm saying basically if you read it from the right to the left, go search for something. So the dollar parentheses said go find it, something. The something that we're looking for is something with an ID, FM Saponic. That form has an ID, FM Saponic. The odd thing that you just have to get used to is there's no pound sign here, but there is a pound sign here, but this pound sign means ID. This form has an ID, FM Saponic. Search for something with an ID FM save comic and store it in a new object we created called whatever. It could be called kitty cat. Var kitty cat equals FM save comic and then we can use it. So now the JavaScript will know that that form exists. Now it will know that if we click submit, do something. Not not quite yet actually, but. It's getting there. Next, create another variable, another object for that table. And this is something that I did previously, but over on the over on the view comics screen. Let's see where is view. Uh, See, just need to orient myself. PG view. Right there. Over on the view screen, we have right here. So I already I already did this for us, but on the other screen, the view screen, we have the save screen, we have the view screen. Um, I have a div there. I have a div placeholder where the table of comics will be shown. So now I need to create a variable for that div. And based on what we've already done, I would continue as in dollar, because this is something that we're creating. There is an element based on the ID of the other thing, div show assign it or make it equal to make it made out of searching for something with an ID of div show. So dollar parentheses semicolon. That's the thing that's basically saying search for something. I'm gonna search for something quotes something with an ID of div show ID in JavaScript is represented with the pound symbol div show there is something in the in the other screen with an ID of div show go find something with an ID div show and assign it to a variable an object you just invented called whatever that one's key cat, that one's doggy dog, var, and whatever we call these things, we will be able to use them however we want, but we're calling it this way. And then on the next code, we'll be able to do something with them. Let's take a break right here. If this If this works, you're good. If it doesn't, We'll, we'll figure it out. The way we can test it for the moment is if you save it and run it and you press F12 in your browser and you don't get any scary error messages, you're fine. If you get the message like me that says it cannot find the fave icon, don't worry about that. But if it says something else like undefined variable or missing semicolon or something like that, we need to fix that. But if it gives you this save icon message, just ignore that. And if you see your hello world, it's working so far. If it's not quite there, we're going to do a pause right now. It's 2.05. It's Let's take a break until 2.15, just a quick break. When we come back, we will write a little bit more code. <laughs>